G'day everyone, thought I'd do a bit of a video on what I've been doing here with these clusters. Um, I'll go through it all individually, but what we've got here is a cluster out of a BA Falcon about 2003, and it's out of an EGAS Falcon, so it's fairly old now, but 15 years old. And we've got one here from a 2009 Falcon, um, still getting almost 10 years old, but I'm trying to decode the CAN bus frames that go between these. So there's two wires, there's my power supply, but there's two wires that run a lot of the data that comes into these clusters. So there's TACO, SPEEDO, coolant temp, um, a lot of the sensors, the engine lights, um, seatbelt warnings, and what else is the ABS stuff, and just for on the BA one you can set the ECU tells it when cruise is on, I think it's the same here but I haven't seen it. Um, tells you when cruise is on, you can tells you what gear you're in, um, anything like that. So I've got a few of them so far. So this is for the, the BA CAN module, so I've been just throwing data at it and seeing what comes back and I figured out that these are the right ones. So I won't go into the details of CAN. Bus. If you want to know about CAN bus communications, have a bit of a look on the net, there's heaps of info about it. Pretty much every car uses it at the moment, um, since the 90s, since the 80s or something. It's a really good two-wire communication method. Um, so I've been using this program here called Savvy CAN. I had to compile it myself because it was broken in the binary that I found, but that just might be my computer. Um, but it's a really good program if you're going to do some things I recommend it. It's got lots of stuff like you can see the flow of the frames coming in, graph them all, analyze them. Sniff is a really handy one because you can make it overwrite the line that's just come in and it'll just color, color coordinate things and, and you know you can just see what's changing. So you can plug it into a car and start the car up and you see all the data coming in but you'll be able to narrow things down a bit better. Now this can also log it and you play the log files back from here so you can play them back into the car and then the cluster would do whatever the car did. So it's just, yeah, there's a lot of things you can do with it. So I'll just turn it on now and you see I'm plugging into the FG cluster at the moment. So you'll have a, have a massive fit. Because everything is plugged in so this cluster actually it, if it doesn't see particular IDs I think most of the IDs that it, it needs or that it normally gets if it doesn't see them at all regardless of what data they've got then it just has a fit and says everything is not working and throws codes everywhere so this this is my little CAN device it's an interface device uh, it's called a CAN tact order it from America that's doing the USB to my MacBook here with running Linux and so we can so I'll just, I'll just fire things up. I don't know what port it's on right now. Two. And we'll bring that up. This one. Yep, we're connected on CAN0. Alright, start capturing in there. We see all the frames coming in from the cluster, so that's, that's what it's sending right now. It's basically spewing our data on 128, 350, 437, and 453. I do know what they are, but I can't remember what they are exactly. I think it's something to do. That's, this is on the high speed CAN bus, there's two, two modules in this cluster. In the FG one there's high speed, which is 500k, and also a medium speed forward one, which is I think 125k, whereas the older one, the BA cluster, only has a high speed CAN. So this one, if I was to interface with everything, I'd need two, two CAN modules at once, and yeah, I'll just, just stick with one at a time for now. You can see the little lights flashing, it means that is coming in. So if I... I just want to suspend capturing because that's pointless to me right now. But I'll show you what happens 
when I send different frames. So this, like I said before, this cluster needs something for it to work. So if I if I send it this top frame, so you can see it's on ID 207 um, bus zero, which is CAN bus zero, ID 207. It's eight bytes long. So you can see over here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one. You can't see eight bytes. If I just make that a bit bigger, there we are. So it sends eight bytes. So this is all in hex. So I'm going to send the first two bytes are 363B and nothing, and five and six are 3B, 3B. So you see on my spreadsheet over here, 207 bytes one and two is the RPM and 207 bytes 5 and 6 is the speed so if I go here and enable that on you see here I've got speed things are happening which is good if I turn that off again you see in about 5 seconds things will go down yep so I'll enable that and the next one is 210 which, uh, from memory, that's the ABS um, system. So it's just the ABS fault codes. Actually, I got it over here. Where are we? That's high speed. 210, yeah, the ABS and traction control. Still haven't got the bits and bytes for that. But if I even send it all zeros, you'll see that. The ABS and traction control light go off because it's getting that frame. So if we continue on with that, 230 is uh, what's 230? 230 is the transmission stuff, which doesn't really have a light on the on there right now. Um, what else have we got 340 is the restraints control. So you'll see I'm sending zeros on there again, and this this other frame, this other bit over here. It's just how often that triggers. So if I turn number 340 on, see the seatbelt lights went off, which is good, which is what we want to see. Now, what else have we got here? 425 is cruise, so it's not, you're not really going to get anything, I think. It just died. Yeah, so I've got a bit of a problem with this adapter. It seems to seems to have a fit. And then I have to redo. Okay. Hopefully we're back. Just giving it a restart, and I've had a bit of a hernia, so I'll try again. How to do this one-handed, but. Many people have done it better than I. Alright. Let's bring up the terminal. So this the reason I'm using Linux is because it uses something called socket can. Which says can libraries already built into the operating system or you've installed them but they're open source and they're really easy to install. So I'm quite a big fan of that. Makes it much easier. It means I don't have to buy a very expensive proprietary dongle. Anyway, well, you can get reasonable ones, but I think this cost me $20 or something. Some ridiculous amount. Just cheap as. Alright. So we'll do... Set up a serial can interface. Speed 500k, that's what the 6 is. And devices... Oh, it's the only one there now. It's good. Because I rebooted it without the USB thing plugged in. And to make that can. Let's make it. Oh, I'll make a can. It's there. It's the only one there. If it doesn't work, I'll try something else. Zero IF config. Can zero is up. Better. That's what I like to see. Alright, let's fire up so if you can. 
No. Yes, we are connected. Very good. Right, so now I'll turn this back off again. So I'll go turn it back on. about how sad it's uh, itself is all again which is just fine there we go yeah as we were before <clears throat> all right suspend that capturing we don't really need to be capturing frames while we're sending them and load i did save it in files one great thing about save you can is you can save all the oh, I save all these things oh, yep so it's gone still enabled because they were last time we used them you can see it's gone back on so I'll turn the seatbelt minders off I'll turn the ABS I'll let it know that the ABS module exists and get rid of all the errors off the screen there we go so that's as far as I've got for now I've got a lot more to do so if all these other errors are three other errors on this so there's um, I think uh, some on the medium speed CAN bus and this one here I think is just a there's an error fix it and that is the brake fail because the brakes have a dedicated hardware input um, like a, an actual wire that you have to ground there's still a fair few wires in there you have to ground or add power to like there's lights and blinkers and um, these have a an integrated uh, what do you call it? integrated flasher can unit it's all digital so you just send it 12 volts you send it 12 volt battery you send it a 12 volt signal on a wire when you want the blinkers let's say you want the right blinker when you in the falcon when you turn the right blinker on it just sends 12 volt to a wire on the cluster and then it, it just does all the flashing and it does the output to the blinkers itself it's quite quite good actually I've got got one of these clusters in my patrol with a Falcon engine um, wired up and made a little dash for it and you can see that uh, this is the original one because I've got a BF computer in my in my patrol it didn't like the oil pressure so I did adjust this a bit so I hooked some of the, the inputs up that was the airbag input hooked that up to the stabilizer which is the rear sway bar on the patrol it's got a little sensor so you grounded that and it light up same over here that was a fuel cutoff so when you put it in full drive it grounds another input so I just used that one and stuck a sticker over it for full drive and it works really well um, with the new cluster it still looks the same but, so far that's all I've figured out. Um, I'm yet to go on the medium speed CAN bus. I've, as you can see, I've got, there's a few things in here. The cluster will receive on medium speed CAN, all the audio frequencies, and this comes from the ICC in the car, and the heater unit. Um, see all the doors are open, and seatbelts are on, and what else have we got? Uh, sonar, so that's the RC, the RCC module, that I was complaining about before, can't see it. It's not the reverse sensors, sonar module. I'm on the center of this here, you can change when when the RCC is connected, it'll tell you you can have the song that's playing or the MP3 or what CD CD is going on, you can see here, here that the FM frequency or mp3 folder and hazard switch the hazard switch in these cars is it's a it's in the ICC so it sends the cluster a signal and once the cluster gets that signal it turns the hazards on so it's kind of it's going to be interesting to get around because I don't want a device on a module on all the time in the car maybe I'll have to make a really low power one or just do something else wire it up manually don't know but that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching this. I'm sorry it took a bit longer than I thought it would. But I'll just turn this off and I'll eventually put up a, once I figure out what's going on, 
with everything, I'll put a blog post up and I'll make a device and make all this stuff as public as possible. Because... Yes, I know I turned it off. Sorry. I can do it turned off. But, yeah. That's it. Thanks for watching.